Hey, it's Jim. It's uh, Wednesday evening. It's supper time, but uh, my wife's away this week with work stuff, so having a beer and some pepperoni out on the picnic table. Had the, uh, <clears throat> a couple people interested in a bit more information on uh, these uh, frog skin vents that I was talking about. So try and give you a bit more detail on that stuff. Uh, this is basically the logo. Outfits based in Minnesota, USA. Um, I know you can find stuff on Amazon. I really prefer to either uh, support the uh, company itself or um, I get these through some of the uh, outdoor recreation stores that uh, cater to snowmobiling and uh, some of those outdoor power sports like that. Um, <clears throat> originally these uh, these vents were actually designed for uh, snowmobiles um, improve the amount of uh, cooling for their clutches and um, their air intake um, as a pre-filter. So both of those uses, it was important to ensure that uh, it wasn't letting moisture and snow through. And so uh, it's quite a fine mesh. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it is really fine. Um, it's not quite as fine as uh, Gore-Tex, I don't think, but uh, anyways, it works as a really good pre-filter. Um, <clears throat> they come in a variety of sizes. I like the circle-shaped ones. Um, you can get them, like I said, so I think uh, three-quarter inch center, and then the outside's like a inch and a quarter, uh, and then you can just keep going up in, in sizes. <clears throat> what I do is, uh, so I'm going to give you all my secrets here, and uh, I know that uh, a lot of you probably uh, wouldn't end up sending me saws anyways. Um, I like the idea of uh, helping people build a better mousetrap, and um, I think since we are all one community of people using these things, that uh, if we're able to... Uh, help the manufacturer um, create something better in the end too, then, uh, then we all win. So <clears throat> um, I'm not putting down anybody that uh, wants to use the max flows or whatever, but uh, I just uh, have found these to be a, a better setup because basically <clears throat> any of the fines are well removed from the actual air filter and so um, they seem to almost kind of self-clean this stuff just falls off I don't know if you'll be able to see that one or not this is actually off a, a, a still 361 <clears throat> this is off Eric's 661 um, where I started with this was on a uh, 460 I'll uh, put a link in for my original videos that I did with that. Um, basically what I did was uh, <clears throat> use the hole saw, cut a couple holes on that one, they were a little bigger than this, and uh, actually taped just a lunch bag around that. <clears throat> and uh, when I was running that saw that way in the cut, I could see that it was uh, creating a vacuum, it was sucking those lunch bags flat. So I knew that it was star for air. And uh, I was still running the stock air filters. And they do pretty good. Um, there's a couple things that, uh, so I'm kind of jumping around here, but um, anyways, a couple things that uh, you can always improve with these a bead of uh, grease around any of these mating surfaces to make sure none of the fines get through. Obviously, <clears throat> the more plugged any air filter gets, then uh, you're creating 
a pretty strong vacuum when the motor's running and so it needs air and it's going to try and pull it from wherever it can so the path of least resistance and uh sorry got my dog just because of the pepperoni anyways path of least resistance so sealing any of this stuff with grease is a pretty good uh means of ensuring you have a really positive seal um but yeah, the, the lunch bag sucked flat against that. So that was kind of when I knew that uh, for me, um, I could use these frog skin vents. I was familiar with them from snowmobiling. Uh, I'd found them durable and uh, had not had any issues with uh, water infiltration and stuff like that. So I was confident in what they do. Um, I think I told you they're out of Minnesota. You can uh, find them by uh, doing a search. And uh, <clears throat> they come in a variety of uh, of them. So for the smaller ones, I think you get six per pack. Bigger ones, you get four. And then the really big ones, like that other 660 one I did, that just had uh, two big ones on it. You only get two per pack. And they're, I don't know. Canadian, they're around 30 bucks. Uh, so in the US, probably like five bucks now. Um, probably around 20 bucks for you guys. Um, so for, I think, kind of a average use, um, just uh, using the hole saw, making your hole to match the uh, inside diameter of this. So part of it's got the mesh on the inside and then um, heavier material uh, around the outside to seal. Uh, they come in, um, I'll just pull a couple of these out of here. But when you uh, go to install them, uh, they um, detach this way on the back. And so um, it's a two part thing. And basically you've got the uh, adhesive on this stuff on the outer edge. And then on the inner, it's just the uh, the mesh. <clears throat> Let's put this back. Hey, Amber. Yeah, when you go to, no, I'm not sharing any more pepperoni. I see. Um, so, uh, anyways, um, and since this saw is going to be extreme duty on the on the west coast, falling. Um, I felt it was important to try and ensure that uh, it had a little bit more support with it. So I did uh, install basically some metal screen on the inside. Um, on these 661s, the way they're set up, they actually come this way with this uh, cutout underneath here. And another one over here just above your... Uh, um, whatever throttle adjustment um, kill switch and so I used a uh, spark arrestor screen on this to try and also end up making a bit of a pre-filter there to uh, keep the bigger chunks out you'll notice quite often with these guys that uh, when you're cutting a lot of stuff flies up underneath and it'll get sucked in there so put a Put a screen in there like i said that's uh that's a legitimate spark screen size stuff so pretty fine and then for this stuff here i wanted something a little bit coarser that would uh, be durable and give the support if it ever got kind of poked from the outside or whatever so that the stick wouldn't end up pushing pushing through so um, with this um, bonded all the way across i think it'll be good it's uh, open where the holes are, and then uh, a good strong adhesive around it. So that's kind of what I did. Um, it's uh, worked for me, um, but again, it's still kind of in a prototype stage, so uh, that's why I'm th throwing out what my theories are. Um, so. 
with the stills. If anybody's kind of messed around between still and Husky and John Surrett or the uh, Echo 7310. Um, the older stills, so the 661, 461, 460, 361s, um, 362, I believe, um, and, and any of that older line, um, they're not uh, force-fed or uh, on Huskies, they used to call it, uh, or John's Red was a turbo. So basically, as the flywheel spins around, kind of pre-sorted and also pressure the air going into the air filter through this port here so the 500i and I believe the 462 use that same um, duct to also pressurize the air going into the saws so you're ending up with kind of like a blower concept it's um, pressurized air feeding into that so that's why on the Huskies and the Johns Reds and my Echo 7310, I haven't gone with the uh, frog skins and I won't do it on 500i either because basically you're getting uh, pressurized air forced into the saw so it, it, it gives the effect of a, a bigger displacement by having pressurized air fed into it. If you end up uh, cutting a bunch of holes in there, then what you're going to do is actually have the air coming out of those vents or those holes and so you lose the benefit of having a blower or a turbo system on it so I just want to share that with you too so that you don't end up um, being kind of counterproductive by putting a bunch of effort into say a 500i and then uh, noticing that the performance would probably actually be reduced so um, hopefully uh, Folks appreciate that. Like I said, uh, it's kind of what I believe is uh, a better method than uh, what I saw with uh, some of the other stuff that's out there. Um, when I get saws in most of the time, and, and when I was logging as well, I mean, last thing you wanted to do was uh, stick your hands in a bunch of oil and muck and stuff end of the day um we did used to uh knock it off a bit early on fridays and i still believe that's kind of the best idea is at uh <clears throat> some point in the week anyways take a couple hours let your guys go through their stuff or your stuff if you're the one supplying the saws get everything cleaned up again for next week if you've got uh maintenance that needs done in addition to the regular stuff at least there's a chance you're gonna find some of those issues whether it's a clutch bearing or or whatever the case is and be um, aware of it and deal with it or leave that saw on the shelf for uh, the following Monday but at least uh, put some effort into maintaining these things I know when I was logging I depended on it for my paycheck if I uh, my saw let me down. I'd have probably ended up having to go home or whatever. So, uh, you know, you want to look after your stuff. And uh, if you treat it right, it'll treat you right. So, um, I guess that's probably enough about that. But, uh, anyways, um, yeah. Hope everybody enjoys your long weekend. Uh, I got one more day of work left this week and then I get Friday off plus weekend, so looking forward to that. Um, yeah, if anybody's got any more questions on this stuff, feel free to either shoot me a message through YouTube or you can hit me up on uh, Instagram, uh, Jim in the Mountains there. Uh, I don't mind uh, helping you out and uh, I yeah, appreciate everybody that's uh, joined my channel. I'm a long ways from making money off this. But it uh, does seem like there's a lot of people that tune in. So I appreciate that. I'd really appreciate it if uh, more folks would subscribe. Um, and uh, yeah.
take care. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.